Why was she in every interview with you? Because I, that's one thing. My mom did not do that. That's one thing I didn't ever see. I mean, why did she ever explain to you why she would sit next to you in interviews? No. It was just the no. way it should be. It was no one's going to get you. I'm going to I'm going to be there. I'm I'm there first. You're mine. I'm not going to give you to somebody. So and I'll you, protect you. I, I'll answer under questions. the guise of protection, but it was more ownership and fear. I th I think. She was the original momager, if you will. And my mom became a manager in honor of Terry Shields because she was known in the industry as the great protector of you, the the one who called the shots, and yet I paid the rent. You paid the rent. Have you how do you feel about that? You know, then it, it, and now. It was all I knew. You know what I mean? We, but, but we got stuff. It's like I did a movie and we got a car. We got a car too. <laughs> and, like, and my mom couldn't afford one otherwise. No. All I knew was keep my mother alive, keep dancing, <laughs> and get stuff. But to emerge from it not angry or jaded. No. Is in there. It's something in your character. It's in my character. Doing this documentary um, has. It's, it's given me a life in a, the most interesting way. What do we say to young girls who are out there on Instagram, on social media, doing the same things we did, so we're not judging it? I'm not judging it. I did it, too. I get it. But now knowing what we know... They, they, they're, they're not going to listen. Yes, I know! <laughs> I wouldn't have listened either! <laughs> I, I, so, you, you know, Allie's a really good one for this. Like, she's, she's got a really great perspective on it. And, and Allie Wentworth, who's her best friend and the producer of this, who we're going to invite out in a minute. I mean, she could talk to this. But, you know, they're going to have to process it on their own because they think they're in control. But then the flip side is they'll say, oh, I can't be alone with that, with that boy in, that, in the, you know, whatever room because he's going to then expect something. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, you don't get to be that woke and then still say this. So you're going to have to try to balance it, but you just keep talking, keep talking to them. And our experience is completely unrelatable. I mean, the, the documentary is so incredibly well crafted with your life's journey in photos and film and behind the scenes that it is literally like you are there with you. And you don't have to like me to watch it. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not like a fan. It's not like a, a retrospective and like you have to be a fan and then you care. Like, it, it's about a bigger story and it's about a female story and a female journey and finding your voice, finding your agency whenever it is. I don't think there's actually been a better time for it because now girls are in the position we were in growing up that was so rare and unique and they are putting themselves have access to and portals to the same thing we went through as kids and I think it's going to be a tipping point in the culture of how we all discuss the new normal with our kids growing up in front of everybody just the way we did and I have to ask you like now that the documentary is out has any of like the male directors like reached out to you? Louis Mal and Franco Zeffirelli dead. they're both dead <laughs> you know I the director of the Blue Lagoon is still alive he did send me a he I saw his name on my phone and I was like oh Oh, what do I do? And I let it go to voicemail because I was like, oh, I want to see what the tone is. And it, it, he wants to chat. I don't know about what. I don't feel like bringing any of it up back up again. And, like, it's not about that, you know. Um, but it's a, it, was, it, it was about, you know, these males needing me to be in a certain category to serve their story. And it never was about me. It never, it was not, never protective of me. It was fun and loving at times, but it was, I was, a, I was just there. I was a pawn. But these men, like Keith Carradine, took such good care of me. He looked at me and he said, you know, this doesn't count as a first kiss. Right. That was gracious and protective and caring on a level that I don't even think I knew at the time. I'd never kissed a boy before. How in the hell did this ever got gotten away with? By the way, 
Did like, I was so confused about sexuality because then my mom like went and dated my boyfriends. Did you ever have that weird situation with your mom? Um, no, because she was in love with me. I was her main focus. And both of us were gonna be cut off from our sexuality. I was gonna stay a virgin. She was going to be just Terry terrific and being there. So it's like there were, I mean, well, yeah, that's a, another conversation. No, and I think my <laughs> um, mom might have been so enamored with me that she actually wanted to be with the people I was with. I, it, I don't get it, but I get it. It's, it's, it's so layered and it's so needy and it's so sad and broken. And <laughs> we're sitting here laughing about the fact that our moms <laughs> were so in love with us that they behaved so absolutely inappropriately and we have our sense of humor intact and I love us for that. I do. I love us for that and so there much. Are moms. And there are moms and they gave us life. And if my mom hadn't schlepped me to every audition and become my manager, I might not be sitting here right now and there's nowhere on earth I'd rather be. But you know what? You think anybody would be doing a documentary if I didn't have the trajectory I did? I don't know, but let's ask your best friend, Ali Wentworth, who <laughs> lived a totally different life growing up. So she has another perspective and she helped make this film and it is so powerful. Let's talk to Ali. We're gonna bring her out.